Hi there. Today we're going to be doing this simple seascape. Quite quick and easy to do, just give you a bit of confidence to so do sky, sea and a foreground. And also there's a little instruction sheet for it. And it's so easy you don't even need a cheat or trace down sheet. Let's get going. Okay, so we're just going to um, draw out the rough idea of this um, where the sea is, where the cliffs are and where the curve of the headland is. So you don't need a cheat sheet for this. So whenever you're doing a landscape, try and remember the third rule. So we're going to mark down here about a third of the way down is where the horizon line is going to be. So I, what I tend to do is, is turn a piece of paper upside down, line it up with the edge of a um, my watercolour paper and just draw a faint line across there for the horizon. Oops, just wobbled on that. That gives me the idea of where the horizon That's about a third of the way down there. Um, in front of that, about a third of the way up, we'll just do a smiley face, just a little wobbly face. This is where the front headland and the um, heather and the pathway and everything like that is going to be. Then in between here, we'll have the cliff tops coming down. So we'll have them just a, start a little way above the um, horizon line. So we have these little cliffs coming down into the water and then they have flat bottoms. They'll come flat across the bottom there and into the into the cliffs. And each one of those will get slightly higher. Now the difficulty is, is not to do them all identical. So you just have to get them slightly different shapes as they come down here. That's one with a bit steeper, but again, flat bottom across the bottom here as they step down into the sea. This is actually the needles at the Isle of Wight. Um, so it's lovely with these chalk cliffs here. And they've had these rocks which come out into the sea. Now, everything when it hits the sea becomes a horizontal line at this distance. So you have these jagged tooth cliffs here. And then on the end here, we'll pop a little lighthouse to give us a little bit of brightness into the picture. There's some stripes going across that as well. Um, just make sure that where the cliffs go up, you'll just have a little bit of a grassy top to them. So we just draw that on top there. So quite easy to draw. And if you've got a cliff in the wrong place, nobody's going to check and find out. So you can always say they've had a good storm and it's blown away since then. So I'm just checking these and just making sure that they go flat across the bottom then go up into the, the cliff tops. And again, we'll just have a little bit of a lead in here with the where the path comes in. So a bit of a line here, perhaps a few little banks of heather to give me a little guide in. And again, a little, I'll talk about this when we come to paint them. But we just have a few little clumps of heather weaving the way across the foreground really doesn't matter if you've got more in or less in than I have, just giving myself a bit of a guideline. Right, that's enough drawing. Very simple, minimum lines on there. It's just what you need to do is just give yourself a guideline into this. If you do have any bits of uh, pencil in the wrong place, just nip them out with a little rubber or even a bit of blue tack, just touch that on to, to make that disappear a little bit. I can't rub them out because, oh, there we are. I've got a little bit of a rubber there. Just going to take that little bit of a line out at the top there before I start. So with a landscape or a seascape as this is, we start from background to foreground. You always start with your weakest, wettest washes first. So we're going to start with the sky and then we'll do the sea and then we'll gradually put the, the foreground onto it. So fairly quick and easy one to do. So for the sky, we're just going to mix up a couple of colours for the blue clouds up there. Um, so I'm go just going to use one puddle with is just an ultramarine blue on its own, which has just gone very grubby because I've got a grubby brush and grubby water. So I'm just going to clean that. Paper. Um, so yeah, I will just mix up a little bit more blue there, and I'm have another puddle of cerulean blue in another little area down here. So just those colours to start with. Thank you. And um, just got some more clean paper handy to me. Very useful that is. And 
I think I'll just pause for a moment. I need to get some clean water. My water's gone very grubby over here and it will just put a grubby mark onto the picture. So I just need to get a little bit of clean water. Okay, right, so the colours are mixed up ready water, waiting. I've got some clean water here and I'm going to wet the sky area. And you can bring it down a little way into the, the top of that cliff top if you want to. And it doesn't matter if it overlaps the sea a little way as well. But you want it to stay glossy wet. This is why I tend to, when I work, I try and use a Bockingford. Um, this is 425 gram weight paper, but you can get away with 325 paper. Uh, that's almost, but that'll cockle a little bit more. So that's staying glossy wet. Um, with good quality watercolour paper, it stays wetter longer. And then we're just going to put in some patches of blue. So all I'm going to have is a, a little bit of a blue sky up here. And as I bring this across, I'm just going to wiggle the, the brush a little bit. So the bottom edge of that becomes a white cloud, a white puffy white cloud. And then just fade it out towards that end. You can put a bit of ultramarine blue into that as well to richen the colours up. Just get that colour varying slightly. So thin bands, these are just those thin summery clouds you get. There's always... 20 different ways of doing a sky and I quite like doing a little simple sky like this, putting some patches of blue in, let's have a bit of the cerulean blue there, perhaps make it wider in some places and then narrower in others. When you're doing a sky remember that the, the clouds are wider as they come up here and then get narrower as they get towards the horizon line. So as we're doing this we get some narrower bands and they tend to get a bit more of the um, a paler blue towards the horizon line as well so we just get them shorter smaller and a little bit paler but again just bringing them backwards and forwards wobbling your brush a bit so we get these varying thicknesses of, of blue there so just have a little bit of the weaker blue a little patch coming in here backwards and forwards just giving me oh that's a bit too strong let's just take that out just clean my brush and just put a little bit of water on with that as well and just thin little bits so not a not a straight line i'm not painting lots and lots of straight lines i'm sort of wobbling my brush as it goes to give me this varied little look for the the clouds coming into the sky there and down into the horizon you can leave it lighter at the bottom here if you want to it's always lighter at the bottom it is higher up and that's it for the sky you really don't need to do any more to it than that it's just um, a bit of color up there from there we can um, make sure it's nice and dry really before you start doing the um, the sea part but we're just going to dampen it just a little bit it should be dry but we'll get it I'll see if I can get away with this if it's too wet it'll start to merge into that a little bit more and this time I'm just going to put bands of water onto the the sea down here just little bands of water like that and then into that I need to do something else first and that was mix my colours up and with watercolour painting make sure you always mix your colours up before you start wetting the paper so I've just committed the cardinal sin so with my colours that I'm going to mix up for the for the sea area we're going to use the same colours that are in the sky so that's the ultramarine blue um, some of the cerulean blue which I've got mixed up here ready and waiting. You probably want to put a little bit of a purpley colour in there as well just to give some darker bands of colour. So ultramarine blue and a touch of Elysian crimson. Make it a little bit darker, stronger bluey purple. Um, and you can put in a little bit of the um, cerulean blue and perhaps a touch of yellow to give me a little bit of a greeny colour. I'll find another little hole to put that in. Just a little bit of, just a sort of um, turquoisey colour because you can get this beautiful colouring around the sea here with all these different shades of blues and greens and what have you. you really you can make all sorts of different colours up with that. And I might just get a bit of the ultramarine blue and a touch of burnt umber as well to put a little bit of darker colouring round by the cliffs as well in a moment. That's the colours of there mixed up, ready and waiting. This has now gone dry. At least my sky is nice and dry now while I was um, doing that. Um, so now we're going to put some 
as I say, some bands of water and just a few horizontal bland bands of water. So when it hits the water, it will blur a bit, but if it um, hits a dry bit, it doesn't matter. Make sure they go horizontally uh, across the paper. We're going to start at the back here just with some weaker ultramarine blue. So just go across the back here. That's a grubby brush. Just clean my brush into the blue colour. Just with a nice little band of blue. This way you can keep that nice little straight line. If you wobble on this point or it blurs up a little bit, later date you might have to stick a little island out there, even if there isn't one. You can put a little island on, like that bit there. We can just dry that because it's still a little bit damp on that spot, but it'll be fine for that. Just keep it nice and pale for the background, just keeping those little bands coming across. Perhaps we'll swap to a little bit of weak purpley colour. Just give it a band or two. Leave some bits to go back to being white. Don't worry about it if it overlaps the cliffs just in some places. Whenever well, you do one side of a lighthouse or one side of a cliff, make sure it comes out the other. And this should give you that nice soft look to the sea here. A little bit more back into the ultramarine blue. Bring it up so it comes underneath here in between those cliffs. A little way we can do something more with that. So if it's onto dry paper, it drags a little bit, but you'll get these little bits of broken, almost like little waves coming in. Now, as we come forward here, we start to change the colours a bit. We get the brighter colours, the cerulean blue coming in. So we have a play with those beautiful colours you get around the sea, around the coast of Britain here, when it's not raining. <laughs> which is very few and far between, but and then some more blues. Just make sure that as you go across here, you're doing it horizontal, that's that way. That's not putting little waves in. It's just keeping it going straight across here. Perhaps a band or two of the greeny colour. Back to the cerulean blue, just across the front here. Into this foreground a little way. So everything I'm putting in here, I'm doing it with the horizontal line, just bringing it across, down to the bottom here. And again, now up to these cliffs, I'll just move my arm around so you can see what's going on. Just bringing it across here, into this bit. Now where it hits the cliffs, I want this a little bit more dark just around here. So I'm just going to be a little bit of the purpley colour, a few dashes of that. Um, a little bit more of the purple where it's going into, where it's hitting underneath the cliffs here. We can always put a little bit more on in a little while, but it's nice to get some in now so it blurs a bit at this stage. Keep these dashes horizontal. And let it blend away. Perhaps a dash or two of that across there so it's not too strange and then just a flick or two, a little bit of ultramarine blue burnt umber mix into there as well so it gives you the, whoops didn't mean to do that, let's just blend it in with a little bit of purple. As long as you put things in horizontally it will look all right. A little ripple coming across there. So I'll probably leave the sky as Oh, the sea and the sky like that. That's half my picture already painted. And we're going to go on to doing these cliffs now. Oh, before I do that, I'm putting a little bit of an undercoat down here for the pathway. All it is is just going to have the um, a little bit of a hint of colour into this pathway. So for that, the pathway, I'll just have a little bit of um, weak burnt umber, very weak burnt umber, the dark brown colour, and a bit of weak burnt umber and ultramarine blue, just to give it a bit of variation in there. So with the pathway, um, we're just going to dampen that area again, so it's not soaking wet, so just around here. Again, not too worried about if I overlap things or in the little shrubs either side here. Just dampening that, a little bit of weak burnt umber in there, almost to the end, so we don't want to go right off the end of the paper there, so a little bit of weak burnt umber again. I'm just making sure these are going more or less horizontal lines but just push that backwards and forwards, just give it a little bit of colour. 
in there so I dampened it first and then onto the one side of it I'm just going to put some where the shadows would be underneath the shrubs just put a, start putting a hint of that colour into there we will go back and put that in a lot darker but it would just help to give it the shape and form to start with into the one side there okay so while that's drying I can go and work on somewhere else so make sure this is all dry and then I'm going to work back onto the cliffs. If you want to, you can dry it with a hairdryer now just to speed it up a little bit. But by the time you've done those and mixed your colours up, you'll probably find it's dry enough to work on. Right, this is all nice and dry now. So we're going to move on to doing the cliffs. And with the cliffs, they're going to be, we're going to keep some nice bright greens on the top. And then down the side here, we're going to have a, a, a bluey grey, a couple of different shades of bluey grey, and then some strong bluey green. So ultramarine blue and a touch of burnt umber for the bluey grey colours, one weak, one strong. And then some um, yellow and blue to make a greeny colour. Keep it a bluey green for the, down the sides here. So with these cliffs, we're just going to dampen down the side of the cliff here. Don't use a mop brush, just use a, a, a small to medium sized brush just to dampen one patch at a time. Don't make it soaking wet. So I'm just going to move that around a little bit so it's um, just slightly damp. Again, if there's dry patches in it, you'll just get a little glint of very light paper on the, to it. And if it's damp, it will just blend in. Then into that, we're just going to drag down the hillside or down the cliff top some of these, this bluey grey colour so it blends and merges, but you'll get these these folds and creases into the, the cliffs here. So just bring it down. Just do one patch at a time. Don't try and do them all, otherwise you'll lose track of how much is wet and how much is dry and what sort of colours to put in there. So just bring it down, just with a bit of the bluey grey, then a bit of the stronger bluey grey. And you might want to just touch that back in, just to, here and there, it's to give you little bits of the... Um, different rocks that you can see there. A little bit of bluey grey coming up round the bottom here. It's a little bit more grubby than I hoped for, but it should work still. Back, back, back to my other bluey grey, put a little bit more in down the bottom just to make sure it just comes down to the sea in some places, but not in others. You can leave some little bits of light here for where it's just catching the edge there. Bringing it up just to bring it as if it's little bits of rock coming down the hillside there. In with my bits of green, while that's still damp, so you can just touch in some bits of green for where the grass and things are growing up the hillside there. Again, not a straight line, dot it in, just to give you a bit of variation onto that. You'll have different patches there, and just underneath this edge at the top here, where the grass will be coming up and round over the top here, to give you the headland in a moment coming through. So that's probably quite nice for that bit. And as you gradually work along, along here, we can wet another, another patch, just wet it down. Streaks in the direction of the folds of the cliff here. This is a really nice one to do actually on location if you're out and about a nice sunny day. Smaller piece of paper if you're out and about. And you just do a quick sketch and then just see what colours you can see there with the folds, the bluey greys for these white chalk cliffs. Just bringing them in and it's quite nice and quick to do when you're sitting there because you don't need all the masking fluid and all the other bits and bobs that we often use with watercolour painting. You just use the paper to shine through and give you the effects that you need. A bit more of the bluey grey colour perhaps in the top here. And then while that's still damp, we can just pop in a bit of the, the greens from the uh, where the little shrubs and things are coming down the hillside. So it just blurs for those bits coming down here and have bits of grass coming tumbling over the top of the hill and down there. Keep it wet because you want it blurry for this stage. It's coming a bit strong there, let's lift that out. Um, so again, move on to another section now. And just keep doing this, wetting it down the slope. Might leave a little bit so it's dry just around there to give me a light bit onto that. Stop on that cliff there. Again, the bluey greys coming down. Painting in the direction of the creases and folds of the, the cliffs themselves. Leaving it to be slightly patchy. 
slightly darker. If it starts to dry out too much, leave it alone. You can always come back and re-wet it and give it a little bit more colour in places. And again, the darker, bluey grey, let's give that a bit darker. Let's put that in towards the bottom here now. Give it a bit of a shadow, a bit of a crease, a bit of a fold in the rocks there. If that's still wet, yep, that's still wet there. I'm just touching a little bit darker at the bottom edge there. Make that a bit stronger down the bottom for that one. And then again, a little bit of the greeny colour, bluey greens, tumbling over the top to where the grasses will be falling down the sides. I'm going to leave that little bit of white there so it looks like where the sunlight's catching that edge onto that part. Last little bits of cliff. Again, these little bits down here. Just dampen them. Try not to make them too stripy. You just want to get them so they're varying a little bit in angle. So you've got a little bit of a, a wobble here and there, but you'll get a patch of dark, a patch of light. These last little bits here onto the dry paper because it's too small to wet it first. Again, just a touch or two of the darker bluey grey, just giving it its shape. A little bit darker, a bit more blue into that. Make it stronger and darker. So it overlaps that edge there. It'll be almost a silhouette on that edge to give you these little rocks coming out. Not so much greenery on that, just a touch of green on the top edge. Last little bit of rocks here where they've got the jagged bits here. I probably won't wet this because it's too small and fiddly to wet it first, so I'll just do a little bit of the bluey grey straight onto the dry paper here, adding these last little rocks here. These change shape quite often, depends on how stormy it's been. So it doesn't really matter if you've got them slightly different. A little bit of dark around the bottom edge where it hits the water. Again, some of these are just a little bit darker on that bottom edge there. And a dash or two of dark into those. Okay, so with the lighthouse, we can. Um, just run a little bit of grey down the one edge of it. Just a weak bit of grey just to give it a bit of shaping. Nice bright cadmium red. Make sure that's dry first, but I'm just going to brave it with a bit of red going straight across there. It's only a little touch on the end there. But into that dry paper there. Put a little bit of dark on the top there to give it top dome. So that's those part done. The top of the cliffs, we're just going to have um, a bit of yellowy colour, yellowy green. Um, so that's cadmium yellow and a tiny touch of ultramarine blue, just to give me a pale yellowy green colour. Oops, too much. Keep it quite weak. A bit of water to it. And I've got my stronger, more bluey green as well up here. I'm going to swap to a slightly bigger brush, not quite as small as I have been using. Perhaps this one might be a bit better. Um, and again, this just needs to go onto um, dry, dry paper. So just load your brush with the yellowy colour. Just bring down some little bands of the yellowy green colour. Touch it up to the top of the cliffs here. And as you've worked a little way, then get your other greeny colour, put a band or two of that into it along there, and then just on that edge where it touches the cliffs, flick it back the other way. So it seats on top of those cliffs there. And then clean the brush into some more yellowy colour. So again, just working along diagonally down, so it touches onto the top of the cliffs here, that lovely sandy yellow colour that you get with the summer time of gorse and grasses and things, but they're so far away you can't quite tell what's what with that, so 
and then the darker bluey green in to give it a bit more shadows especially from the bottom upwards there so again don't make it too stripy we'll just have a little patch of that coming in and the last little bit bit of the yellowy green coming down here and a bit of the bluey green coming back up into the the pale green there so they blend and just sit there so that's all your cliff tops done so now we just need to look at the foreground so we need to bring up some of these we're just do, going to do some shrubs down here and some um, heather and stuff in the foreground here so a couple of different ways of doing that we need to put some base coats of green on first so biggish brush um, we're just going to put on a little bit of the, the grassy colour for the foreground onto dry paper. Um, just put an undercoat into the, where the where the yellowy greens are going to go. And I'm just going to leave some of these at the moment. This is just like an undercoat of, of green for the bits in between the shrubs here. And I'm just going to leave these little patches at the front where the head, heather's going to go. Take a bit of that out. So just straight onto dry paper for those. You might put a bit more in there. And then perhaps a, another patch over this side. Again, that's the yellowy green colour, ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow mix. Just to start building up those. We'll probably put another bit in here in a moment or two. Just take the puddle out of that. And now we're going to start putting some little shrubs on top of there. Should really let it dry, but I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to swap for a slightly smaller brush. So it's not too big, something like a six or an eight round. Um, we're going to put in little shrubs in here. They could be um, any sort of shrubs. They could be gorse brushes and things like that. But the main thing when you're doing shrubs and flowers is to remember light at the top, dark at the bottom. So we've just let that dry a little bit. So while that was drying, I was mixing the colours up for the shrubs. So. Um, you want a cadmium yellow and a touch of ultramarine blue to give me a, a pale yellowy green, a, a stronger, more bluey green. And then if you want to have a, a, a bit stronger again of ultramarine blue and a touch of burnt umber, or we won't put too much of that in just at the moment. And this, this time we're going to do one shrub at a time. And you're going to dot on, just with your smaller brush, dot on in one area some of the yellowy greens. Just dot it on randomly in vaguely a shrub shape. To the bottom of that, you're going to start dotting on a bit of the bluey green. So again, just leave some of the yellowy green at the top, but towards the bottom of that, you'll dot on a bit of the bluey green colour, keeping it varied at the bottom so it's not a flat line at the bottom. That's it, one shrub done. We'll move on to another shrub. So yellowy green at the top. I'm going to leave some of these bits of pale green to show through. So just dotting on randomly some of the yellowy green not quite into that other shrub at the top there but almost and just let it um sit there and then again just dotting on yellowy greens this is just a little group of shrubs here just do a few at a time then the bluey green in towards the bottom let it dot up into that color you've already put there and then randomly at the bottom so it's not a straight line just let it dot back up again and this should be darker at the bottom this is a bluey green ones towards the bottom here perhaps to one side the right hand side as well to give it a bit of shape and that's how we can put our little shrubs in quite quickly like that do a couple more of those yellowy green at the top just do as far as you can go before it starts to dry out down to the top of this other little shrub we're going to put heather into these little ones in a moment so yellowy greens at the top there put a bit over this side as well bluey greens in towards the bottom perhaps in some places if i've gone over the sea i want to make it a little bit darker in some places there towards the bottom bluey green a bit more blue into that to give it that bit of variation just dotting it in making it vary but lighter at the top, darker at the bottom. Just keep chanting that to yourself. Lighter at the top, darker at the bottom. And you'll keep 
getting nice little shrub shapes. Same on this side, we just put a couple over here. Yellowy greens at the top, I'm going to get it's a bit of a brighter yellowy green, so it looks a bit more like a gorse bush. Let's break that edge up where it goes over the sea there. Bring it down. Leave some of this original yellowy green to show through. Then I'll get the ultramarine blue and a touch of cadmium yellow. Stronger, more bluey grain into it in some places, but keep it darker towards the bottom. Perhaps not quite that dark. That's better. And just dot it in so it blurs in some places, but not in others. And again, keeping it quite strong and dark towards the bottom there. Now I'll do another little bank of those. A little bit of yellowy greens at the top. Let's just bring that one in front of that one. Just dot it on yellowy greens, leaving a little gap in between the two shrubs there. And a bit of dark bluey green towards the bottom. So that's my distant shrubs. So, that they, so these have a different effect to those where we put them onto damp paper. So we've just got the little shape of those coming in. They look a bit more shrub-like. These are just a touch of darker in there while it's still damp, just to make sure it's a little bit darker at the bottom. So now we can do the same sort of thing with these bits of um, uh, heather which are there, but we're just going to use different colours for those. We can put a bit of the greens in the middle there as well in a moment. But we just want to do the heather. Um, so with the heather we're going to have a, a purpley red, Elysian crimson, or some sort of purpley red if you've got it, or a rose madder or something like that. And then we're going to make up a purpley blue with ultramarine blue and a touch of Elysian crimson. Or if you've got a little bit of violet colour or something like that, you can have a little bit of that as well. But it's always nice to mix your colours up. They tend to put, look a little bit more realistic if you, and more harmonised if you keep them all mixed up together there. Um, so make the Elysian Crimson a bit weaker, the purpley Elysian Crimson and the Ultramarine Blue a little bit stronger. Um, and then if you can get a little bit of a darker one as well, Ultramarine Blue and Burnt Umber perhaps, just to make it a purpley dark. Um, so this time we're just going to put a few little spots of water on first, just in the direction of the, the um, bits of heather on here. So we're just going to dot on one clump at a time. So we're just going to dot on a few bits of water, just with a smallish brush, just bring them, dotting it on so it comes down. This makes the paint blur a little bit more. So now with the weaker, slightly weaker Elysian Crimson, we're just going to dot in a bit of that. So sometimes it hits the water, sometimes it doesn't. This will make the paint go a little bit paler in some places. So just overlap that edge, just dot it on in the direction of that clump of flowers there. Bringing it down, this gives some nice brightness to the foreground here. And then into that I'm going to put a bit of the purple, so it's not everywhere but making it stronger towards the bottom of the clump, or darker I should say. Leave some of that original pur purple and leave some of the um, little bits of white showing through there as well. I'm going to put another clump in front of here and another clump in front of there. So I'm making this edge uneven as I bring it down. So just making this uneven, but only in a little row of dots there. If you can get a little bit of darker colours again, just dot or two of that into the base of those. Not all the way along, otherwise it gets a bit contrived, but just a little bit of variation into it. I'm going to move on to another clump. So I'm going to do this one, dot it with a bit of water first. Let's do that one and that one. Start off with your paler reds, dotting it down. Oops, I didn't have any red on that, it came purple again. A little bit of your paler Elysian Crimson, weaker paler Elysian Crimson, dot it in so it comes down in the direction of the way the flowers grow, in with the purple, dot that in so sometimes it blurs and runs and sometimes it goes onto the dry paper, which will give you this bit of extra sparkle to it if you get a bit of light in there as well. And then make it a bit more solid towards the bottom. And then a, a dot or two of very dark. Only a 
dot or two of that into the bottom there. Some of these I might put a bit of green in there as well in the front. I'll just do one or two more clumps with this. Um, let's just bring another one over here. It's quite quick once you get the hang of this. It's quite quick to do them, so it just gives you a bit of life and a bit of a bit of light to it. Sometimes when you're doing these, they become too dense with the colours, so by just putting in a drop of water first, it will blur in some places, but it'll also make you leave some little white bits in there, which happen to give it a bit more interest and sparkle to it. It makes it look more watercolory somehow. So enough on that side, we'll just do the same on this one. Dotting it with water first. Just one clump at a time, otherwise it will dry out. So you just need to dot it with water. Paler reds on first. Weaker paler lilies in crimsons. And then in with my purpley colours. And then a bit of dark in there as well. Just in a couple of little places, just to give it a bit more depth. Same with this side now. Dotting it with water. Well, I'll just finish these little bits on here. If you want to just join me in a minute for the last few touches, I'll just carry on doing these dotty bits. And you can catch up with me in a moment. Right, so that's most of the purpley bits done. And I'm just starting to build up some yellows and greens in between here because it isn't just all purple at the front. You'll have these little bits of grasses and um, other plants growing through here. So start off with a, a lighter green. Just dot it on the same way as you've been doing for the uh, bits of heather. And then a bit of the darker green and then a touch of dark bluey grey in between there as well. So just a little bit over this side. So same sort of thing, you can dot on a little bit of water first, a little bit of clean water, just where you're going to put these lighter bits of the greenery, a bit of yellowy green on first, pale yellowy green, it'll go quite light as the water's there, and then a bit of the darker bluey green into that, so you leave some light bits and then some darker bits. And then just at the bottoms of those clumps, if we can get an ultramarine blue and burnt umber or even a touch of indigo or something like that just to make it go a little bit more shadowy towards the bottoms of those little clumps there. Last few little bits, that's those little bits of yellowy greens here. I haven't bothered to put a bit of water on, but I should have put a little bit of water on onto there or just a bit of pale yellowy greens to start with and then some more bluey green into that patch so it runs and blends a little bit. Don't have to worry about this too much, it's right at the bottom edge of the paper and a touch of the dark bluey green or um, ultramarine blue and burnt umber mix just so they blend on that little clump or two just around there. Final last little bits into these parts, so we've got little white bits around here. Do a few at once there just to speed it up a little bit. So I'm weaving this in between the clumps of the heather, just as it would be in nature that you'd see some little areas with purple and then some little bits of the yellows and greens and things around there and a bit of dark towards the bottom of each little clump there. I'll just put a tiny bit over this way. And then all we've got to do is add a few little shadows. A bit of the dark green there. So that's all, all it is with the shrubs. So now we're just going to put a few shadows, ultramarine blue and burnt umber. It's going to be a bluey grey colour. And onto dry paper, this is where it will just flick horizontally across the paper from the shrubs, base of those, across the pathway. The sun's coming this way, so it just give you the shadows of those little clumps there onto the dry paper, a bit more blue into that I think, just to give that, that little, that's better, a little bit of shadows 
uneven shadows coming across the path just to make it look like the sun's popped out. And again, now these, these on this side don't come across the path, they'll just tuck back in underneath those little shrubs there. Not much more on that side, a bit under that one. And you might get just a little bit of a shadow under some of those, keep that fairly weak. Just again to seat those down a little bit there. If you wanted to, little flick, put a bit of gravel in, a bit of browns and a bit of the shadow colour, or dot on a few little stones, just to give you a little bit of interest into the, the foreground. And that's it. Let me just put a mat round and see what that looks like as a little finished painting. I think we'll have that little green one on there. And there we have it. Simple little seascape.